Warning, I say a lot of bad words. Not your main. Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to the third episode of Main Event Reviews. We already on the third episode, that's crazy. In this video, we're gonna take a look at JCW Legends and Icons. Before I say anything, I am not a wrestling history expert. I'm just a random guy that likes to watch and talk about wrestling. I don't know too much about JCW. I just wanted to talk about this show. I still gotta watch all the other shows they made. I seen they made this new show called JCW Lunacy. I gotta check that shit out too. I know of ICP, but I never listened to their music for real. I only ever played like one or two songs from them like a long ass time ago. I wanna say that was in like the late 2000s because that was the same time I found out about Juggalos. I only ever seen one person wear a Juggalo merch in real life. He was wearing like a hockey jersey. This other Juggalo shouted out to him down with the clown. And then the guy with the hockey jersey said whoop whoop. Or whatever the fuck he said. I don't know Juggalo lang for real. Hey, them backyard wrestling games ICP made was pretty cool. I ain't gonna lie. I went back on the second one and made myself. They didn't have my hair, so I just made my guy bald. I would say for the time that it came out, this game is better than AEW Fight Forever. I'm mostly saying that because I fucking wasted my money buying that shit. That motherfucker scammed me out of my money. Okay, but anyways, we got this guy named Kevin Gill hyping up the show. I never really heard of him before. I was looking on his cage match and his rating is even lower than this show. This show got a 1.46 and he got a 0.91. Goddamn, is he really that bad of a commentator? I can't really say nothing. People be saying my commentary ass all the time. But shit, I don't give a fuck though. I'ma say whatever I wanna say. Oh yeah, by the way, this is like the shortest steel cage I've ever seen used for a wrestling ring. I ain't never seen that shit before. Mick Foley comes out and he walks out to the ring. He got the ICP shirt on. He about to do commentary with Kevin Gill tonight. Now Mick Foley, it's an honor to have you here. So many great matches on the show. What do you think about the Midnight Express taking on the Rock and Roll Express? With all due respect to both those great tag teams, I'd just like to take in the unique atmosphere and hear the name Cactus Sack chanted a little bit more. They setting up for the first match of the night is Greg Valentine versus Tito Santana in a steel cage match. Aw oh man, they're starting this show off hot. But first, we have to take a look at Tito Santana's backstage promo. After on special assignment, out there in the arena, the cage has been erected. Tito Santana, in that steel cage will be you and Greg the Hammer Valentine. There's quite a history of a feud between the two of you about the Intercontinental title. There's quite a history. You know, there's two things that I'll never forget about Greg the Hammer Valentine and Tito Santana. It's the surgery that I had at the hands of Greg the Hammer Valentine. And after I chased him for over a year, the longest feud in professional wrestling, and what he did to the belt, destroyed the belt in the ring. So I can't wait to step into the ring in a cage match. Arriba! Tito, he's waiting for you. Let's go to ringside. Let's take it to KG and Mick Foley. They having some audio and video issues with this show, but fuck it, here comes Greg to have a Valentine. I said it once before and I'ma say it again. This dude look like an old sad dog. No offense to all my elders listening to this though. Greg walking down to the ring, he ain't got no robe on or nothing. He look like he ready to get this shit over with already. Tito said that him and Greg had the longest feud in professional wrestling history. I don't think I ever seen them go against each other because one, I'm young as shit. And two, I don't know if I would enjoy watching that. They probably had some decent matches back in the day though. I went on Greg Valentine's cage match and it say that he fought Tito 195 times. God damn, I did not expect it to be that fucking high. This still cage looks small as hell. It looks like a fucking toy. They got like four cameras and all of them have different qualities in them. Here comes Tito Santana. I haven't seen this guy wrestle that much, but I saw him as El Matador and I saw his tag team with Rick Martel. Me personally, I prefer Rick Martel over Tito Santana. His heel gimmick is pretty cool to me. I feel like they need to bring more gimmicks like that back nowadays. I think Tito's pretty decent though. I heard that Tito didn't like the El Matador gimmick. Honestly, I wouldn't say it's a terrible gimmick. At least he wasn't a red rooster or some shit. I was thinking about this earlier. Imagine if Tito teamed up with the Mantar. I was thinking about that at work and I kind of wish that shit happened now. Hey, do you think David Penzer is really just a poor man's Jeremy Borash? <laughs> some say Bill is running the world today, Nick. Oh man, thick hammer like forearms. Should probably mention off right off the bat that he is the son of the legendary Johnny Valentine. Uh, so I don't think there's a whole lot of warmth going around in the Valentine family come dinner time. 
I'm watching this shit, right? And I'm trying to figure out why this match need to still cage for. Both of these dudes are fucking 60 years old. That's fucking crazy. I would have been retired by now. This is going to be Chris Jericho in a couple of years. Every time I go online, I see people telling Chris Jericho to retire. I used to like Jericho in the 2000s, but now I'm tired of seeing his ass. Y'all ever seen this picture of Chris Jericho? They trying to say he Brian Griffith with no hair. That was on creepy ass episode of Family Guy. The order episodes of Family Guy I like more, they were more funnier. Man, it feel like I'm watching an 80s wrestling match right now. JCW had this show in Illinois. I'm in Illinois, but that shit like five hours away from me. I never been there before. I tried to look up some pictures and this is all that came up. The fucking big ass cave. I wonder what it's like going in there. It looks kind of creepy, but I would check it out, I guess. In my last review, I was talking about this Dennis Rodman pay view in Australia. At the start of the video, I asked that they called the Sydney Opera House the Sydney Superdome. And people got mad as hell at me for that shit, bro. They was getting mad at me for not knowing the Opera House and saying I ain't learned shit in school. I feel like they didn't teach us that in school, but I might be wrong, though. Half of the time in school, I was just drawing in my notebook. Here's a drawing that I made back in high school. I made that for like an art project or some shit. Oh yeah, I forgot to say that Greg's bleeding. That shit happened in like the first minute of the match. When this show came out, I was 10 years old. It's kind of cool finding old ass shows like this years later. This is a steel cage match and they fighting with the steel cage open. I guess they don't want to close it or some shit I don't fucking know. They could just walk out the door or just climb this short ass fucking cage. This match is just brawling and shit. I wasn't really expecting much from this match anyways though. Greg pins Tito Santana by putting his feet up on the ropes. This has to be like the world record or like the shortest steel cage match of all time. Hey, now that I'm thinking about it, i never seen Tito Santana win a match ever. I know he won some matches, but i never seen it before. I can't believe it. I believe the viewers at home clearly saw those feet upon the ropes. I do, but when you're Greg Valentine, you've been in the business as long as he has. You developed a very deep bag of tricks, and the hammer reached into that bag tonight. Greg is walking up the ramp, and as he's walking up the ramp, Dave Penzer gives him a award. Greg turns back around, and he walks back to the ring, and he gives the award to Tito Santana. I don't know what the hell is going on, but fuck it. He threw that shit on the ground and just walked away. This shit's funny as hell, but I ain't gonna lie, this feels like a waste of time. Greg really cut his forehead just to wrestle in a steel cage for two minutes. Also, the ending fucking sucked. Greg and Tito had two more matches after this. The last ever match against each other was in 2017. I can't imagine how that match went. Greg won that. You know, this is eerily reminiscent of when Greg Valentine destroyed... What? Destroyed that intercontinental belt of Tito's. That was Greg's trophy for this match. Wow. Didn't expect that one. Tito Santana, again, that hot Latin temper. I don't know if it's the Cholua or the Tapatia or what it is, but he's hot about losing that match. And look, that, that, that award is broken into pieces. I don't know why, but it feels so awkward watching this part. He over here breaking the award, but Greg doesn't even care, so what's the point? It would have been different if he would have, like, snatched it out of his hands or something. I don't know. The crowd isn't really reacting. They just watching him do it. Tito goes like a Reba, and he just leaves. While Tito walking back to the backstage, Mick Foley and Kevin Gill call him a sore loser. It's kind of funny, but at the same time, I feel kind of bad for Tito. He had the foot on the ropes, man. He had the foot on the ropes. What a whiner, huh? Unbelievable, you know? <laughs> You win some, you lose some. Go to the pavement. Oh, though. he had one in the ropes. Here we go. Now the ring crew got to go and take the steel cage down. I don't even know why they needed a steel cage for. They barely even used that shit. They could have just had a regular match. It took the ring crew a long ass time to get the cage down. Them taking down the cage was longer than the match itself. Kevin Gill and Mick Foley yapping just to waste time. I'm skipping this shit. Here's a Headbangers promo backstage. Bill After once again backstage here at Legends and Icons. Hey guys, come on in. The Headbangers. Hey. <laughs> Guess what? We're in a battle royal. And that's just you're in a like, battle royal with. We're in a battle. How come, how come you're in this nice tux, but you have these funky sneakers on? Yeah, sneakers. What's like, and what's with anyway, what makes what makes oh you guys God. think you're gonna win this battle royal? Because it's right up they're, our alley. They're a legend. It's like a big mosh pit. We're gonna take everybody and throw them right over the top rope. Back to you, Mick and Kevin. Let's go to the I ring. What did you do, man? I didn't talk yet. I want to talk about how I'm gonna win the battle royal. What's wrong with you? What's with those? Coming out of the bottom of his nose right what, there. What if what, what if you guys are, are together at the end? Who's going to win? Shave your head. Let, let's go back to ringside. Thanks a lot, guys. Jeez. Hey, they finally fucking took the cage down. Now it's time for the second match of the night. It's a 15-man battle royale. But instead, they made it like a Royal Rumble. Everybody just coming out one at a time. I don't really mind it, to be honest. It makes it kind of interesting. And plus, there's only 15 people, so yeah. The first person who comes out is Jim Duggan. 
Did you guys know that he won the first ever Royal Rumble? Maybe on a serious note, I would have thought it would have been somebody else. I wonder why they chose him to win the Royal Rumble. No offense to him, though. I never understood why he carried a 2 by 4 with him. I just looked that shit up and it basically say he used it to keep angry fans away. Is there any footage of him using it on a fan or some shit like that? i never seen that before. Imagine getting hit with a 2 by 4 The second person that comes out is Headbanger Mosh. But on the nameplate, it just say Headbangers like both of them came out. That shit kind of funny. At the start of this match, they just wasting time. They lock up a few times, but really they just waiting for the next opponent to come out. Mostly, they're just walking around and talking to the crowd. Mosh over here getting freaky. He over here pulling up his skirt. That reminds me of Big Vito when they had him wear a dress. They had Big Vito flashing everybody. USA champ goes up. Count along here. It's Cave and Rock in the USA, because it seems to be in its own little world. It is. Who's next? Wait a minute. That music can only mean one thing, Mick Foley. Wait a minute, I hear that signature saxophone riff. I, I hear it too, but I don't see anybody coming. Uh, this was going to be my ploy if I ever did another Royal Rumble, just that, not to come down to the ring until uh, late, late in the match. It's a very smart way to win the match. The third entrant is Ronnie Garvin. This is fucking crazy. He ain't even got no wrestling gear on, bro. I thought that was some random ass dude that fucking snuck into the arena. He got on a regular ass outfit. I never seen that shit before. He don't give no fuck. He ready to get this shit over with and get paid. If he was going to come out like this, why they even book him for real? No offense to him, but they couldn't find anybody else that actually wanted to be a part of this match. Because it looked like he don't want to be a part of this shit at all. And the crowd cried as hell. They didn't give him no reaction. When he came in the ring, they just started looking at each other. It looked like they don't even know what to do. It looks kind of awkward. They just fucking around until the next person comes out. Marshall over here sitting in the corner looking at this bullshit unfold. Shit, I would have did the same thing. Headbanger Thrasher comes out next. Thrasher and Mosh start teaming up on Jim Duggan and Ronnie Garvin. I wish they would just eliminate Ronnie Garvin already. Y'all remember in 2016, the Headbangers came back to WWE? That shit was so random. They had only three matches and they were fucking gone already. I wish this match would end. I'm tired of watching this shit. They ain't doing no spots or anything, just punching and kicking. Foley, and now speaking of here, who's One. next in this battle royal here at the gathering? Wait a minute. Could it be? Yeah. Carlito's got an open container. Anything goes at the gathering of the Juggalos. What the hell Carlito doing here? Bro, I did not expect Carlito to be in this shit. He came out to the ring drinking some beer. He said, fuck the apple, he trying to drink some beer. I only seen one Carlito match outside of WWE. He was going up against Santana Jackson. Other than that one time, I ain't never really see him. I'm glad he's back in WWE right now. He's jacked as fuck, but they changed his theme song, though. I don't like his new theme. It fucking sucks. After Carlito comes in the ring, Jim Duggan eliminates Ronnie Garvin. They should have been throwing him out. No offense to him, but he ain't even dressed up for this shit. The next guy that comes out is Jimmy Snooker. I ain't gonna lie. This guy is not looking good at all. Why the hell they bring this dude out? It's like he in pain walking, bro. And also, it kind of looks like he's naked. This is just terrible all around. The snooker gets into the ring, and they all just stop fighting just to stare at him. This reminds me of the time he was in the Warrior Rumble with Roddy Piper. I forgot what year it was, but he was standing in the middle fighting Roddy Piper while everybody was looking. That shit was depressing as hell to watch. Legendary moment of course. Yeah, look, at, look that. at the respect. Not just the competitors in the ring, every person at this event, and in fact, everyone watching at home, get up out of your chair and give some love to the great Superfly. Wait a minute, look at Jim Duggan. Jim Duggan just eliminated Mosh. Mosh has been eliminated. 30 seconds to the next participant. A little bit of an homage to one and an adios to uh, another, uh, Mick. Jim Duggan sneaky as hell for that, bro. I thought Carlito would have done that instead of Jim Duggan, but I guess I was wrong. His partner doesn't even care that he got eliminated. He just let that shit happen. Tony Atlas comes out next. Bro, this motherfucker got this tight-ass jersey on. Where the fuck he get that shit from? How the hell that shit even fit him? He got the Orlando Magic jersey on, but he missing a star. That shit fell off. He remind me of Ahmed Johnson in WCW, but less fatter. Hey, but for his age, he's looking better than some of the people on this show. I ain't gonna lie. I found out one day that Tony Atlas has like a shoe foot fetish. He likes to kiss on women's shoes and have them step on his face. He be posting that shit on Twitter. I was like, what the fuck when I first seen it? But I mean, if that's what he likes, that's what he likes, I guess. Visceral comes out. This is my first time seeing him in a match outside of WWE. This is one big ass dude. The commentary team calls him Big Daddy V. But on the nameplate, it's a Viscera. They ain't even spell his name right, but I'm gonna just call him Viscera anyways, though. Every time I think of Viscera, I think about that one time he was fucking Matt Hardy in the middle of the ring. I felt kind of bad for Matt Hardy because that shit looked kind of scary. Look at this snooker locking up with Viscera. Uh, officially, my last match in WWE was the Royal Rumble in 2008. And, and Big Daddy V, he, he sat on my head. He sat on my head. 
when I was wow. in the corner and, and did damage to me. I'm very grateful, as well as the viewers at home, that it did not, in fact, pop your head like a pimple. We don't want your brain on the mat and turnbuckle like a like a popped whitehead, Mick Foley. You have too much to give to this business, just like every legend in the ring. Look at the sweat fly off the back of Duggan as those powerful smith. There goes Duggan, just like that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Visceral eliminates Jim Duggan, and then he eliminates Thrasher. Nobody cared when Thrasher got eliminated because the next guy about to come out. The next guy that comes out is Rob Conway. I like this theme song in WWE. He had like a piano theme song. Jim Duggan walking up the ramp, and then he hits Rob Conway on the back, but he no-sells it. That was looking kind of weird. Does Rob Conway even still wrestle? I don't even know what the fuck he does nowadays. Tony Atlas got eliminated, but I don't know when. They say that Carlito threw him out, but they missed that shit. Rob Conway showing off his muscles to the crowd. Then Tony Atlas starts flexing his muscles in front of Rob Conway. Both of them have like a muscle standoff. Tony Atlas was about to go to the backstage, but then Mick Foley starts talking to him and tells him to come on commentary. Well, I tell you, I have wrestled all over the world, but let me tell you, these guys here, they, you know, they, 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 they rough. What, what more can I say? They rough, they really want to win this, and this is the greatest wrestling show on earth, and I'm glad to be a part of it. But I'm coming back next year, brother, bigger and better than ever. Wow, world exclusive, Tony Atlas will be back at the gathering, and from the looks of that pose off, he might be in there with Rob Conway next uh, you time. You know what, I just realized this is my gimmick. I'm gonna be the commentator who invites the entrance over after they've been eliminated. The next guy that comes out is Zach Gowan. He came out with a walking cane. Zach was about to get in the ring, but then Rob Conway starts attacking him. Conway's just nasty out there. Submissionary Rob Conway, a deadly force to be reckoned with, of course. Zach Gowan and Submissionary Rob Conway, part of Bloody Mania tomorrow night, live on pay-per-view. Only $5, Mick Foley. B Bloody Mania. Bloody Mania 5. Bloody Mania <laughs> Listen, I'm not telling this story just so I can put over the fact that I've visited troops at D.C. hospitals, but I have visited troops at sure. D.C. hospitals. Zach Gowan's a huge inspiration to a lot of those people in particular. Oh! What? Wait, Rob Conway just ripped off the prosthetic leg. Seconds. Rob Conway took off Zach Gowan's leg, and they both just start staring at each other. While that's happening, Carlito does a dive on Rob Conway, and he fucking eliminates himself. That's so fucking stupid. Here comes Dorn the Clown. He looking just like Krusty. Man, he looking rough as hell right now. I remember seeing this one match he had against Jim Duggan. In the middle of the match, they ended up fighting. And then he said, you want to work or you want to shoot? And after that match, Jim Duggan had an interview where he said, I'm not fucking scared of no Dorn to Clown. That shit funny as hell. Mick Foley trying to get an interview with Carlito, but instead Carlito grabs his beard and walks away. I probably would have did the same thing. And while that's happening, Zach Gowan eliminates Jimmy Snooker. I ain't gonna lie, Snooker was in there for way too long. Hey, I just thought of this. Zach Gowan can never lose his match right because both feet had to touch the ground. But anyways, here comes Eugene. When I was a kid, I used to like him. But growing up now, I don't like his gimmick that he played. Some people like it, but me personally, I ain't really feeling it. He had his other gimmick where he played as a doctor. Well, recently on one of our pay-per-views, the admiration crossed into what I call make the dark side of retarded. Eugene fell out with Zach, and now we're seeing these are the first time these two guys have seen each other. But we're gonna clarify that you out. would put it that way, I not me. Okay. The opinions of KG Kevin Gill do not in any way reflect the opinions of the great Mick Foley. Mick Foley called over Jimmy Snooker at the commentary table. And then Jimmy Snooker says the guy with the one leg is a genius. He don't even know what his name is. I don't know when Dorn got eliminated, but he's just chilling at the ramp now. Shit, but fuck it, here comes the beefcake. I wish he would have came out as a Zodiac or the Booty Man. Bro, I just noticed he got his nipples pierced. I ain't never seen that shit before. Hey, when did he dye his hair blonde? Mick Foley got done talking to Jimmy Snooker, and now he's trying to talk to Doink now. Man, I've got this new gimmick where I interview people after they come out of the Royal. Vince hasn't thought of yet, so uh, put on the headsets and tell, so tell me a little bit about the gathering. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Nick, I'll tell you what, the gathering is a phenomenal thing, man. It seems like I went to the center of the earth, and I went to this carnival at the center of the earth, and all these freaks are out here, and you know what? They take freak to a whole new level than what I took it to in 92. But I'll tell you something, Mick. You know what? I never rake a guy in the eyes because I have to. Right. I do it because I want to. Whoa. And that big son of a gun, that vis 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 viscera, whatever he is, I, sure, I had to rake his eyes. I wanted to rake his eyes. I didn't have to. So what? He had doubles my weight. I don't give a damn. I could kick his ass in there. I could kick his ass out the street, and I don't care. You know what? It was illegal what he did. The referees wouldn't let me go back in there. And you know what? I'll take all three of those referees, and I'll kick their asses out the street, too. Whoa. I don't care. I'll take them in there. It doesn't fucking matter to me because I am the man. 
I don't do it because I have to. I do it, damn it, because I like it. Disco Inferno comes out next. This battle way out, random as fuck. You guys ever watch this podcast with Conan? I don't really like it that much. Eugene gets eliminated by Zach Gowan's foot because Beefcake punched Zach Gowan in the face on the apron. The Invisible goes on to eliminate Beefcake. The camera almost missed the elimination. For some reason, they were showing Kevin Gill and Mick Foley instead. Brother Brutus is eliminated. Brutus! Brutus! They got Rikishi in this motherfucker. He's the last person in this 15-man battle royale. They spelt his name wrong. It reminds me of that video game Wrestling Revolution. I like playing that game. It's pretty fun. They got the big boys fighting in the middle. That's a whole lot of meat right there. I wonder who's the fattest wrestler of all time. Have you guys listened to Rikishi diss song he made against Hulk Hogan? That shit was so random, he just dropped it one day. I didn't even know that motherfucker could rap. Macho Man made a diss track on him and then Rikishi made one on him too, that's crazy. Rikishi is the only person that did some spots in this match. He gets Disco Inferno in the corner and he hits him with the stink face. Would you rather take the stink face or the Bronco Buster? I think I'd rather take the stink face because you'd cover up your face better. It's kind of interesting how Rikishi was able to make a career off shoving his ass in people's faces. I heard that if Rikishi didn't like you, he'll wear smelly trunks to the ring while he's giving you the stink face. That is fucking gross, man. No, he's cinching up that Samoan-like Japanese sumo-inspired thong. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm going to borrow a page from this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that, look at that. Look at that. What, what, a, what a maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wait a minute. No. Are you kidding me? Uh, Rikishi has been on Listen to the crowd reaction. They wanted to see Rikishi in there. Rikishi had the... Wait a minute. There goes... Di no. Disco's holding on. Chan's spinning. I think they wanted to see more of uh, Rikishi, and uh, Whoa. so did I. Come in, Disco are out. I can't believe... Rikishi came in like a lion and went out like a lamb. I don't think he was expecting that. I'm going to tell him you said that. We are at the final two people of this match. Zach Gowan and Vistra, but Mick Foley doesn't give a fuck. He wants to interview with Kishi. Uh, uh, Kishi, man, uh, I'm working a new gimmick out here where I'm interviewing people. We got to tell you, people very disappointed to see uh, to see you for such a short time. You know, I'm also very disappointed. It's my first time here with the Juggalos here at the at JCW. And I'll tell you, tonight was unbelievable with the vibes that I got from these people here. I'm sorry, disappointed the fans tonight, but hey, uh, Fraser, Mr. V, Big V, whatever his name is, we cross path again. I'm out. I'm Absolutely. Go I'm gonna go on record. I'm gonna go on record saying largest pop of the night for that man. Hey, get out of here. Hey, yeah. I got the biggest pop of the night. You, oh, you idiot. Uh, you heard. You heard the fans. They were cheering for me out there. Disco, disco. Gowan's in trouble. Idiot. I come all the way over here for JCW to have some guy stick his ass in my face. I, I don't need somebody. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Hold on. Wait a minute. Vicer is tangled in the ropes here. Disco and Fredo tried to say something, but nobody cared. Kevin Gill cut him off as soon as he started talking. The ending to this match was so random. Visceral put Gowans on the ropes and he just threw himself over. The underdog wins the battle royale. I ain't gonna lie, I had to stop making this video like 10 times. This shit was a fucking pain in the ass. I was gonna show y'all what Zach Gowan said after the match, but his theme song is copyrighted, so oh well, fuck it. We have an interview standing by, truck let me know. This is like the early days of Nitro, right? <laughs> Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson, will this feud ever end against the Midnight Express? Oh, I'm telling you, it's a blast from the past, and it's just like fine wine that never gets older with time. The Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express, and there's only one Express, and you're looking at it. What are you going to do to Country and Eaton? Right now, if they take care of business, you can watch out for yourself. It's the Rock and Rolls against the Midnight Express. Back to KG and Mick Foley. The Midnight Express versus the Rock and Roll Express. Both of these teams are way before my time. Does anybody know why both of the teams are called Express? When the Midnight Express came out, they gave them the wrong nameplate. They having a hard time with these names. I hear stories that Bobby Eaton is a nice guy. That's pretty cool. I would like to meet him. Rock and Roll Express make their entrance. I seen Ricky Morton wrestle a couple of times. I think he's pretty good. So is Bobby Eaton. I like him too. Ricky like almost 70 years old still wrestling, bro. He got a son that wrestles too. His name is Kerry Morton. I never seen a match of his yet though. What do y'all think of his son? Do y'all like him? Spoiler alert, this match is 30 seconds long. As soon as Rock and Roll Express get in the ring, they start fighting and brawling. I guess they made this into a tornado tag team match. 
To be honest, I don't really have an opinion on this match. They do like one spot in this match and they just end it. The crowd was silent as hell. At dominating and intimidating their opponents. Great tag team in their own right. These are two of the greatest teams as far as having classic matches of all time. Absolutely. With Wait a minute. Looks like it's taking a page out of his playbook here. No. Double dropkick. Signature move. That put away. Whoa. Double pin. Are you kidding me? We got it. Rock and Rolls did it just like it's that. over that quickly. Faster than the eye can see. Rock and Roll is king, Mick Foley. Possibly we're not going to add that to their long list of classic matches, but it's still good to see the guys, huh? We go back to the backstage again for a Terry Funk promo. It's going to be a fight. Terry Funk, Roddy Piper has told me he's coming here for a fight tonight. Are you ready? Am I ready? I am so ready for Rowdy Piper because you've got to understand what this guy has done to me. This guy is nothing more than, than, than cat poop. That sounds stupid, cat poop. But I'll tell you what, my daddy years ago went ahead and told me, he said, son, he says, every horse, if he's, I'm 98% sure that if you breed an idiot horse to an idiot horse, what you produce is a frigging idiot. You understand that? Yes, sir. Well, Rowdy Piper's mother, she was a whore. Rowdy Piper's, Piper's father was an idiot. You breed those two together, and what does that produce? It produces an idiot. And why am I so upset? Because this idiot goes running around California knocking me out there to all of the producers and directors and going ahead and telling me how wonderful, telling people in the world how wonderful that they live was. They live. What a horrible, god-awful movie. It was a what a stinking I mean piece of crap they live was. My God, I could go ahead and I could do something even better than that. They live. Roddy Piper died. He died in that movie. Look at the movies that I made. Why do you people keep on talking about how great of an entertainer Rowdy Piper is? Going ahead and putting him on the stage in this day and era. Well, he is. I'll tell you something. He is a great actor. He is a great actor, but not on the screen, not on the movie screen. He's a great actor in the wrestling ring. Roddy Piper is a faker and always has been. Terry Funk is a real deal. Can you count on that? I'll tell you, you can be sure of that. I am the goddamn real deal. That might be the best promo of the night. He was able to make an interesting promo with talking about movies. And it was real intense, too. I never seen that movie Terry was talking about. Is it really that bad? Third match of the night is a seven-way match. This is an all-ECW match. The first guy that comes out is Raven. I'm not really a big fan of Raven, but I don't hate him. I thought he looked cool when he was younger, but that was pretty much it. Do y'all remember when Raven used to wear a skirt? Here comes Balls Mahoney. How do you come up with that name? That'd be one of my first questions I asked him if I met him. They really had this dude back in WWF as an evil Santa Claus. But instead, his name was like Santa Claus or some shit like that. I saw him in EC, WWE, and I didn't really care for him that much, to be honest. Here comes Chris Franchise. I see his podcast and interviews sometimes. In most of the videos, he's talking about like Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Sometimes Ric Flair. I hear people say that he's bitter, but I'm not really sure. They really had this guy be a teacher as a gimmick. Shit, I wouldn't want him to be my teacher. Here comes Sabu. Every time I see him, I think of this one set he had with Vince McMahon. It was his first time meeting Sabu, and he was like, you stay the hell away from me. He fucking buried the shit out of ECW, bro. I be seeing Sabu post on Twitter. He be saying some wild shit on there. Somebody need to take away his phone. Here comes Tuco Scorpio. I like Tuco Scorpio. I feel like he's underrated sometimes. He be doing some cool moves and cool flips and shit. The last time I heard about him, he got arrested for stabbing somebody. It was in self-defense, though. I forgot. Al Snow, also known as Brian Griffin. Well, I call him that because I think he look like him. Every time I see Al Snow, I gotta show this picture. Whoever sent this to Al Snow fucking roasted his ass. Al Snow really at OVW right now. I'm surprised OVW's still alive. The last guy that comes out is Rhino. He comes running out to the ring. He looks pretty decent in this match right here. I saw Rhino in TNA, and I didn't really like it that much. That was when TNA was still Impact Wrestling. I don't even know if he's still on the roster. I don't even watch TNA anymore. Rhino really got fired for like the dumbest reason of all time. He got fired from WWE for breaking a flower pot. It felt like they was looking for any type of reason to fire him. That shit crazy. I wonder how different his career would be if he didn't break it. 
I'm going to be honest. I don't give a fuck about this match at all. I don't even know the rules to this match. They're just getting in one at a time. They just do spot after spot for like three minutes straight. I'm not really a big fan of that type of stuff. Rhino was about to go balls, but then he gets interrupted. So then balls hit him with a Mishinoku driver. Balls turned around and then Scorpio hit him with a super kick. No, you kidding me? For oh my God. Balls Mahoney too. No. Bro, Tuko and Scorpio did like a 450 foot stomp to him. That shit was on accident. I ain't never seen that shit before. I feel like they should have had Sandman in this match. He would be a good fit for JCW. Just having him do his entrance and shit. After they do all their moves and finishers, they start ending the match now. This whole thing was a three minute spot fest. I only care for it that much. Some people enjoy it, but to me, it don't really make that much sense. The end of this match involves a table spot. Sabu's gonna fly as well. Whoa, my God. Possibly compressing the C4 through C6 vertebrae. Rhino hooks the leg on Al Snow. Rhino got him. Rhino Here got him. Here is your winner, the war machine, Rhino! The fucking cameraman, Mr. Gore. Whoever the cameraman is, they need to fire him. After the mass Sabu was pissed off, him and Rhino were just staring at each other, but they wasn't doing nothing. Then Rhino just walked away. That was kind of random. Hey, Whoop, whoop. Wait, wait, we have to redo a great moment in history, okay? I'm gonna be Vince. Pretend that you think you're my son, okay? Go ahead. Vince has balls. I have no balls. And then the whole garden <laughs> for 10 minutes. Vince has no balls. And then Austin didn't get the reaction. I didn't end up wait, on the fucking Wait, wait, wait let's do it. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh. Rhino just gored. Two cold Scorpio on the map, but Sabu's gonna fly. I just got stomped on my face. I know. Wait, wait, listen. Let's, can we do it one more time? Can we do a replay of me? Let's do it one more time, okay? For those people who didn't hear at home. You want to redo the famous yeah. moment in yeah, WWE? Go ahead, in Madison Square Garden yeah. history? <laughs> Vince, just think about it for one minute. Vince has balls. Are you ready for it? I have no balls. <laughs> and then 20,000. Bitch has no balls and I get to cheerlead him. Mick Foley calls over Brian Griffin. I don't know why you want to talk to him for. Like, out of all the people in the match you want to talk to him? No offense, but still. Al, uh, surprisingly strong reaction here at the gathering. Tell me how it felt to be delivering all those heads to the cranium. Oh, it was fantastic. Not, you know what it's like giving a lot of head, Mick? No, I don't. I have no idea. It's been one of your favorite no, pastimes, no. right? No, that's just a rumor. Oh, my God. It's a rumor. That's but it was everything I could do to survive, get away from Sabu. He almost put me through a table. Both of us no strangers to that. Next thing you know, I turn around, and there's the gore. Out of nowhere, I about practically pooped my pants. Next thing you know, one, two, three, I've lost. They also do the Boss Mahoney sandwich with Al Snow, too. I guess that must be Mick Foley's favorite or some shit. I don't know. Vince, you have balls. I have no balls. <laughs> it feels like almost every wrestling show I watch, I see somebody dressed up as Hulk Hogan. They be having a full outfit on. You can never escape that shit. And I notice they always be in the front row, too. But anyways, it's time for the fifth match of the night. This is a regular one-on-one -on -one match. There goes Bob Backlund. I can't believe he's one of the longest reigning champions in WWE history. He was champion for over 2,000 days. That's fucking crazy. I don't know why I kind of like him, even though he seems a little bit crazy. I prefer him more as a heel than a babyface. But I don't mind him as a babyface either, though. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I wanted Roman Reigns to be the longest reigning champion of all time. People was bitching and complaining about his title reign. Now they complain about Cody Rhodes' title reign. I like Cody and Roman, but I like Roman Reigns better than Cody. Kevin Gill says on commentary that it's 3 in the morning. I never heard of a show running that late before. When the hell did this show even start? I would have been tired as hell, bro. Man, this guy's fucking 70 years old coming out to this ring. What was they even thinking booking this guy? He should have stayed his ass at home. I only ever seen like one Camp Atera match in WWE. And that's about it. I already got arrested over some McDonald's. That's some fat ass shit right there. I ain't gonna lie. Bro, you wanna know what's crazy? This is like one of the longest matches on the whole card. Besides the Battle Royale, though. This match only fucking six minutes long. All they did was stand in the middle of the ring and do rest holes and shit. If they was going to do this for six minutes straight, they should have made this match 30 seconds also. I just realized Ken Patera has a singlet over his shirt but under his shorts. I've never seen that before. Have you guys seen the new Vince McMahon documentary they just made on Netflix? I'm on like episode three right now and it's pretty good. But one thing I don't like about it is Hulk Hogan. He went on there and started lying about like the smallest things. I wish I knew why he goes out of his way just to lie sometimes. The only guys that wasn't lying was Tony Atlas and Bret Hart. I don't know yet, though, because I ain't finished that shit yet. 
But anyways, this match got rated 0 0.33 on Cage Match, and I can see why. If I ever make a video on like the worst matches of all time, this will be on it. You know, once that chicken wing is a pro wait a minute, Backlund rolls him up, two, three, Bob Backlund did it. Bob Backlund's done it. He got the win. Here is your winner, Bob Backlund. The match card girl handed Bob Backlund a award, and he's just looking at that shit like, what the fuck is this? I probably would have did the same thing. Bob Backlund put a fan in the chicken wing. That's funny as hell. I don't know why, but I didn't expect him to do that. After he gets done doing that, he just goes into the crowd and he starts yelling and stuff. Bobby, if you don't mind, man, I have to tell you. Oh, and Bob, here's a mic for you. We've known each other a long time. Amazing how seemingly polar opposite people just bonded. You really seem to take to these people and they took to you. This is good. Yes, sir. Yeah. There can we you go. hear me? Yeah, we can hear you right there. That can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, he's doing it. Yes, we can. Can you hear me? This is for the people at home, Bob Backlund. This is for the people this at home. This is for you. Yeah. You know what? Next time I come here, I'm going to clean up your language. Whoa. Hey, hey Bob, don't exacerbate me. <laughs> wow, Bob Backlund. Yeah. I told he's, you, he's batshit crazy. Can I say that on TV? Sure you can. It's pay per view, right? Yeah. This is JCW. I don't this is usually drop the. Next time I'm talking to you guys. Bob Backlund hey. doesn't even need a microphone. Oh, man, okay. You know what, from love to hate, you said he's crazy and you're right, just like flipping a switch. And don't talk back to me when I'm addressing you. Who was the shortest president? Who was the shortest president? Backlund. Whoa. All right. Don't forget your award, Bob Backlund. Yeah, don't forget that. With all due respect, yeah. one love for the great Bob Backlund. He's going back to the ring. Why is he so hey, angry, hey, Mick? What's happening? You're happened? making me look good. Uh, if you get the camera on me, let me repeat the phrase. Okay, uh, bat shit crazy. <laughs> there it is, Mick. Tell it to the people at home, BSC style. It's the sixth match of the night. It's gonna be a five way match. I wish they had graphics for this show. They just showed a match card lady, or whatever they call her. First guy that comes out is Dutch Mantel. I like to watch the videos on YouTube. He be telling some good stories. He also has a video talking about this pay view, too. Dutch Mantel got bad luck. First he was on Heroes of Wrestling, now he's on here. This show kind of reminds me of Heroes of Wrestling, but on crack. What do you guys like more, Heroes of Wrestling or this show? There goes Coco Beware. I don't care what nobody say, I like Coco Beware. I like the little bird he had with him too. I seen online, somebody was asking, why is he in the Hall of Fame? That's so disrespectful, man. Why they do him like that for? I was laughing a little bit when I read it. Coco ain't bringing a bird with him, but he got the bird hat on. I ain't never seen that type of hat before. Break House of Brown, I'm not really familiar with this guy. Somebody in the comments gonna get mad at me for not knowing who he is. One thing I will say, he don't look bad. Hey, I'ma be honest, the only time I ever watched Doug Gibbard was when he was Freddy Krueger. I made a whole video about that shit. Fucking Memphis Wrestling is so random and crazy. They had Freddy and Jason, and they also had Super Mario. Anything you could think of, they fucking had it probably. Austin Idol comes out, and this is his first match since 1994. He really came out of retirement for this shit. That's crazy. I seen pictures of this guy when he was younger, but that was it. Some people say that Hulk Hogan stole this character from this guy. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't really doubt it. Look at him. Yeah, Another man right. straight out of the brine jar. Possibly the egg jar. Most tavern. Oh, see, that's a mistake. You know, I'm a big believer. Pose for the fans and get that stuff in after your hand is raised, Mick. Look at this. These Memphis legends are all teaming up on Austin. As soon as the match starts, they start jumping on Austin Idol. I wonder what made this guy want to come out of retirement. They probably paid him some good money to come out here. Dutch Mantel has one of the worst outfits of the night. He got a yellow shirt on, a camo pants, and some red boots. That shit right there fucking ass. It looked like he closed his eyes and just started dressing up. This match kind of feels like the Battle Royale. They doing a whole lot of punching and kicking, but instead this match is two minutes long. Who the hell was even booking this show, bro? I want to know. Unbelievable. I know I'm rocking this uh, Juggalo shirt. Uh, they want to call it the Gigolo shirt because I've got some love handles in action. In action. Speaking of action, Dutch Mantel's got that whip in the ring. But wait a minute, Austin Idol rolls him up. Two and three. He did it. He got him. Austin Idol's your winner. Here is your winner, the Universal Heartthrob, Austin Idol. This got to be one of the worst finishes I've ever seen to a match ever. Doug was just standing there while he was getting the pin. Then he was acting confused like he couldn't stop it. I don't even know what the fuck going on anymore. By the way, this is Austin Idol's last ever match. Wow, what a shitty way to go out. This was Brickhouse Brown's second last match. After the match, Brickhouse Brown tossed to Mick Foley and Kevin Gill. What's happening to all my people at home? Sit down, checking it out right now. 
I told my mama before I left, I was gonna knock somebody out. And before I leave here tonight, by God, I'm like the mailman, I shall deliver. Asanado comes to the commentary table. He doesn't cut a promo, he just talks about his clothing brand he's gonna drop. The clothing brand is called Athletic Apparel. I tried to search it up, but nothing came up. This is all that came up. Did he even drop any clothes? I'm recording this part at like 2 a.m. right now, so yeah. It's time for the next match. Tracy Smothers versus Tommy Rich. I never really watched Tracy Smothers that much. I know he was in ECW and shit, but that's all I could really tell you. Hey, but right now he looking like a Red Dead Redemption character. I don't know why, but I like the first game better than the second game. Especially online. I don't like the online mode. I love the zombie version of Red Dead Redemption. They need to bring that shit back. Tracy got Isabella Smothers with him too. They zoom in on her getting into the ring. No offense to her, but I ain't trying to see none of that shit. I don't even know what the hell she wearing. Tracy Smothers, you want to talk about double tough? You want to talk about a man that can fight, that can wrestle? Look at this man. Double tough. Oh, whoa. Tommy Rich came out with this big old yellow shirt on. I seen Tommy Rich in this feud against Dirty Rose. Yes, I said Dirty Rose and not Dusty Rose. This guy right here was a ripoff of Dusty Rose. I love looking at ripoff wrestlers. It's always so funny to look at. Another 30 second long match. Damn it, D-Lo. Bro, I don't know. It just feel like they was getting anybody for this show. Imagine going to see this live. I don't even know what to say about this shit. They did like three things and they just ended the match. Gordon Soley incorrectly interpreted the crowd chanting fire up as saying fight up. Wow. And nobody could find Wait it a minute. themselves. Smothers has his feet on the ropes. Isabella Smothers got involved. Tracy Smothers using the ropes for leverage. Are you kidding me? Just like that, Mick Foley. Smothered and covered. Covered and smothered like some great Waffle House food. Here is your winner, Tracy Smothers. They ended this match the same way they ended the first match. Damn it, D'Lo once again. I'm just glad that match is over with, and I bet they are too. They cut the camera to the crowd, and they showed this guy sleeping in the front row. His ass is knocked the fuck out. That shit funny as hell. It's time for the co-main event. It's an NWO versus DX dream match. Billy Gunn and Road Dogg versus Kevin Nash and X-Pac. I feel like this match should have happened like way sooner than it did. But take out World Dog and Billy Gunn and put in Triple H and Shawn Michaels. That would have been a good ass match. No offense to these guys though, I like them too. Every time I see these two guys, I think about that one promo they cut where they were like, Meet me at the Alamo. That shit is like stuck in my head. Just like the Mike Graham never drew a dime shit. Cut the music. Good timing. Welcome to the gathering! Whoop, whoop, indeed. Where anything goes from your nose to your toes. So let's make a little noise. Juggalos! Yeah. You're damn right. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, tonight the ICP proudly brings to you the seven-time WWF Tag Team Champions of the World, the Road Dog, Jesse James, the Badass, Billy Gunn, the new age outlaw! Wow. And of course, if you're not down with that, we got two words for you! Wow. Good try, but it didn't work. They came out wearing these big ass shirts. You could use them motherfuckers as parachutes. Is JWO even still a thing now? I only ever seen that shit like two times. I like all three of these guys, especially when they was in WF. But for Kevin Nash, though, I didn't like him when he was Diesel that much. I liked him more afterwards. Kevin Nash and TNA is so funny. If I was in TNA, I'd probably be the same way. I'd be watching Kevin Nash YouTube videos. Some of them pretty decent. Hey, yo. Whoa. For years and years, We've been taking a little survey about whether you came to see WCW or whether you came to see the... That was a little lame, but I'll give you another chance. But I always, always wondered if it came down to the two hottest tag teams in the world, how many people came to see DX. It's quite a warm response. Nice response. How many people, how many people came to see the NWO? If he's leading the audience there, 
sing with along the, with Scott the vocal Holmes. intonation there. You know, I do that with my kids. Like it's, <laughs> hey, it, it's really, really close. But survey says one more for the bad guy. See, that's not fair because I could say to my kids, hey, kids, uh, you want to hey, go to Disney And World? if you ain't you down with that, Afghanistan. then I got two words for you. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, indeed, Sean Waltman. For some reason, they have Vampiro as a special guest referee. I don't even know why, but they do. I kind of like Vampiro. He has an interesting story. He has this documentary on YouTube that you could watch. It's pretty good. I seen this like a while ago. It's him talking about his family life and all his injuries and shit that he went through. Did you guys know that he has his own self-defense school for women? He said in an interview, it's called the Guardian Angels. It's kind of crazy that only two people in this match are still wrestling. Vampiro and Billy Gunn. I didn't even know Vampiro still wrestles. He wrestling in AAA right now. Hey, but Billy Gunn and AEW looking fucking jacked. He looks way better than he did back then. X-Pac over here flying all over the place. To be honest, I'm surprised he still ain't wrestling too. The last match he had was in 2022. I don't know why, but I really like 123Kid. It's something about him that I just like. If I had to choose between X-Pac and 123Kid, I'm choosing 123Kid. X-Pac ends up doing a Bronco bust to the road dog. He fucking injured his asshole doing this move one time. I saw the video and there was blood everywhere. I would show the picture, but I don't know if I should or not. If you want to see the video, it's on YouTube. Just look up X-Pac Bronco Buster gone wrong. If that shit happened to me, I would never do that move again. This is like the second longest match of this whole card. And it's only six minutes long, too. It's the best match of the night, but it feels like I'm watching a house show match. They're actually hitting moves and not just punching and kicking, so that's a plus, too. X-Pac was in the match doing all the work. He was fine both of them by himself. Kevin Nash, smart as hell, he be getting money doing the bare minimum. Kevin Nash got the hot tag at like the last two minutes of the match. He looking tired as hell already. He only hit like two moves and he just got in there. He might as well tag X-Pac back in. Vampiro out here helping out JWO. He helped him get the win with a super kick. I didn't really like the ending to this match. It made the New Age Outlaws look stupid, to be honest. Although Vampiro a little slow getting down to the knees. Uh, a lot of wear and tear working that Mexico, Japan. Whoa! Oh, man! The crowd seems, seems to be working. Enjoy. Yeah, it seems to be working pretty good there. Wait a minute. Nash gets the cover. A little help from Vamp. Two, three, fast count. DJ Clay the bell. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your winners. The Juggalo World Order X-Pac and Big Sexy Kevin Ash, accompanied by Scott Hall. Afterwards, Vampiro takes off the referee shirt and he got a JWO shirt on. Oh my God, what a swerve. Kev, want to make sure that leg is okay. It looks like you were limping a little bit, Big Sexy. Uh, mostly the, the, mostly the, 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 the drive, but actually it was the ferry crossing <laughs> that sent me back tonight. <laughs> Hey, wow. man, hey, can I say something? How good does X-Pac look out there, man? It's like... It's amazing, especially that ring's... You know, that ring's a little bit rough, too. You know, a, that's the whole thing out there is... It's bouncy rings like that. X-Pac looked amazing. I, I know a lot of what we do here is honor the past, but I'm telling you, X-Pac's got another major run left in him if uh, the oh, right absolutely. people look his way. Absolutely. And so does Kevin Nash, to be honest. Incredible performance tonight, Big Kev. Oh, thanks. I'm going to send out a little text to one John Laurinaitis here. Yeah. Uh, X-Pac looked good. Hey, Sean, come on over here, Vampiro man. Vampiro saying he wants Corporal Robinson to take notice. Hey, Sean, I've got this gimmick I just developed where I, I'm talking to uh -huh. the guys after the show. Yeah. i got to tell you, with all respect to most of the guys out here, a lot of what we're doing is turning back the hands of time, sure. paying honor to the uh, the legends. But, man, I'm going on record saying you've got another run left in you. Oh, it looks on, like thanks, you're man. out there with a purpose. Like, every match is a sign to people that you've still got something left in the tank. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. You know, uh, I'll be honest with you. I kind of blew up out there. Hey, hey I didn't, didn't notice, notice it. Well, I did. <laughs> well, I don't think the fans here or the fans at home noticed, Sean Walton. Oh, thanks, man. I, I, I'm just happy to be here, man. Well, hey, this is, as a shoot, I'm going to, not that I've got a lot of swing, but, uh, and I don't have a signal, so I can't do it. Uh -huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to text the, the best people I can and tell them I saw you in action and you looked as good as ever. Thank you, man. That's uh, every little That's bit awesome, counts, man. right, man? Thank you, Sean. It's great to see you, and it's awesome to be here together. Yeah, that's what it's all Fantastic about. Fantastic to be here. That's right. And you know what I also learned tonight? Bob Backlund is batshit crazy. He has for real. He's out of his fucking He's mind. He's out of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a memory. He, like, sharp it's as unbelievable. Crazy. But, but, yeah, he's oh. gone. He's gone. Hey, thanks, Sean. Great hey, to thank see you. you. Thank, thank you. you both. All thank right. you, Sean. Do y'all know what time it is?
It's time for the Nacho main event. Terry Funk versus Roddy Piper. Let's get it on. I don't know why, but I like Terry Funk's attires, especially the pants, even though it's simple. Like a month ago, Dory Funk did a tribute match for Terry Funk. He was wrestling in an explosion death match at 83 years old. That shit right there is fucking crazy. Terry got inside the ring and he started smacking on Dave Penzer. Damn, why is he so angry at him for? What'd he do? I don't care how old he is, he's still one of the most dangerous men out there. Look at Penzer. Penzer better get out of the ring. He's bitch Penzer slapping stopped. David Penzer. <laughs> Penzer should powder around Mick Foley. I be, uh, Dan, I guess, this is about to turn ugly. I guess we found somebody who's not enjoyed DP. Roddy Piper comes out and he got Bob Orton with him too. I like Roddy Piper, but I hate that one promo he did at WrestleMania. He did a fucking half blackface going up against Bad News Brown. I was not fucking with that shit at all. Only back then you could get away with shit like that. Terry Funk grabs the mic and he starts talking. Roddy's not even in the ring yet. Basically, he starts saying the shit he said backstage over again. You know, I'm going to tell you something, Piper. And you better keep your ass on the outside of the ring. And I might just run your ass out there. <laughs> I want to tell you something, Piper. My daddy, you know, I was an actor. I was an actor. Is this guy an actor? Hell no. He's not an actor. He's the worst actor of the bunch. What? The Rock was better than him. And I certainly was better than you. But no, you don't treat me with any respect whatsoever. What's wrong with you, Piper? I demand a little bit of respect. You know, you're an idiot. My daddy, my, my daddy, he always told me if you breed an idiot horse to an idiot horse, do you know what you get? You get an idiot. And you had idiots Stupid, ignorant parents. What? That's what you had. Are you kidding me, Terry Funk? And when you breed idiot, stupid parents to each other, what they produce is another goddamned idiot. And that's what you are, Piper. You are a phony, faking wrestler, and I am not. You faker, you phony, you piece of crap, you cow dump. Oh, what are you doing in here, Orton? Get out of the goddamn way. Roddy Piper wants that microphone. I can't believe the things Terry Funk just uh, no, said about uh, him. Uh, man, I've never heard anybody uh, address yeah, Roddy Piper, a certifiable legend in our business, in quite that way. Roddy and Bob Orton start jumping on Terry Funk. They ring the bell to start the match, even though that should be a DQ or some shit. I don't know what the fuck going on. I thought this was going to be a one-on-one -on -one match, but I guess not. I wonder why they don't talk about this show as much as Heroes of Wrestling. After watching this show, I'm just wondering, like, why not? They got a whole lot of shit just going on that you could look at. The first 10 seconds of the match, they already outside the ring, bruh. Roddy over here whooping his ass with a belt. Does this match have any rules? They just doing whatever they want to do. Bob Orton won't leave the ring, and Terry's getting his ass beat for like three minutes straight. He's busted open, and they're beating him up with a belt buckle. This feels like I'm watching a fucking WCW match. All that's missing is a fucking DQ. The crowd wants Foley to come help out Terry Funk. They're chanting, Foley, Foley, Foley. Then eventually, Foley makes his way down to the ring. Are you kidding me? Mick Foley wrestling history's been made. I'm going to do something. Mick Foley is headed to the ring. Oh, my God. Mick Foley cannot stand by for another moment. As Terry Funk, it's a numbers game here. Cowboy Bob Orton, Roddy Roddy Piper, belt. Wait a minute. Mick Foley's in the ring. Mick Foley is in the JCW Legends and Icons ring. Bro, this shit is so fucking funny. Foley came in the ring and he started getting his ass beat too. He should have stayed his ass at the commentary table. At this point, Terry had a better chance fighting him by himself. They looked at Foley and just started beating his ass. That's like watching your friend get jumped and then you get beat up too. I guess this match is a tag team match. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I heard recently that Mick Foley wants to do one more death match. Looking at this match right here, I think he need to stay out the ring. He is fucking crazy. Hey, but no offense to him though. They take out Mick Foley and they start jumping on Terry again. I feel like if this match happened like 20 years ago, it would be way better. But right now, this is one terrible main event. They did a fucking four minute long main event, man. Holy shit. They went from chanting Foley to chanting bullshit. Try to, oh my God, Terry Funk rolls him up. One, two, no. Funk broke it up. Sorry, Piper broke it up. Two, are you kidding me? They used, it's a numbers game. 
It's a numbers game, David Penzer. What is going on? Piper and Orton won the match. Are you kidding me? kidding me oh my god rowdy rowdy piper letting a few fans know they're number one but look at terry funk he's got fighting him and he's got mick foley standing by his side after the match terry and foley started talking to the crowd and did you see me trip when i tried to get in there's a reason why i'm retired but i want to tell you guys something with the exception of a few people who threw some stuff i was a little worried about coming here when you guys watch this show, you're going to see there are some moments just of genuine. Yeah, we, we just love doing this stuff. Love seeing the guys out here. We appreciate the respect you guys showed the legends of this business. And if you'll have me, I'll come back next year to the gathering of the Juggalos. Whoa. Whoop, whoop. Hey, and... Uh, I damn sure don't want to wrestle you, Mick. What? No more. But <laughs> I'd love to have you as my partner. Wow. Thank you. They go back to the commentary table, and they start talking about how bad the match was again. Yeah, I have to agree. It was terrible. Terry, I mean, geez, I, I kind of stunk the place up there. I feel kind of responsible. I got a real disdain for Piper. I don't... Uh, I don't respect him, you know, he's made well, some, why? Well, why, he's made snide remarks about me and my acting ability and says that I was just a flash in the pan, you know, and I did TV series, I did movies and everything else. And then he did that damn, what was it? Uh, they live, they live. They live, you yeah. know. Well, they live, but he died after that one, oh, I'll tell oh, you that yeah. for sure. Piper is, he's... He's a vicious man to me, and it's because jealousy. And I know I'm older than him, and I'm a, I feel 105, you know, but the older you get, the nastier and meaner you get, and that's what I want to be, as nasty and mean. Well, hey, man. Man, you, uh... I want to be nasty and mean like you whenever I get your age. <laughs> wow. I'm kidding you. I'm talking about the... Hey, his body's had some rough times through the years. He's, he's a little older than his and age. What about my pride older. when I got out there and I fell and then I didn't get any offense in? You got you God, fell. Uh, come on. Jeez. Uh, well, uh, I rolled around a little bit myself uh, out there trying Hey, to. but it's great to see you out here. Okay. They're shutting the lights down on us. We had a great time, did we not? You know what, Mick Foley, we sure did. It was an honor for me to be part of this Legends and Icons event with you. I am, of course, your boy, KG, the voice of Juggalo Championship Wrestling. Join us on Psychopathic Live tomorrow and every two weeks for our great $5 yeah. pay-per-view series. And there was a, 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 an actor in the 70s uh, who did porn named Gil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I believe so, yeah. Did he ever work with Christy uh, Canyon? I know, he was before Christy's time. Well, the Brickhouse Brown. <laughs> well, on behalf of Mick Foley, on behalf of Brickhouse Brown, on behalf of everyone at the gathering of the Juggalos, Legends yeah. and Icons, we want to say thank you, we love you, whoop, 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 whoop. And we'll see yeah. you real soon, Juggalos. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Hey, this video would have came out sooner, but I got busy with shit. But hey, look at the bright side. At least it's out now, though. By the way, shout out to Wrestling Valor. They showed one of my videos at their recent show. I never had that happen before. That's pretty cool. I need some videos of that shit. Damn, that's crazy. But anyways, if you forward the video, hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Nacho Man out.